by our very nature, early adopters, you know, in the EV space are quite data hungry. We want to know what's going on in there and, you know, what it means for the vehicle over the lifetime or what it means for what we should look for in our next uh, EV. So maybe you could tell us a little bit about the battery report, um, how you kind of rolled that out and uh, what you're seeing from the initial results. Yeah, for sure. Um, so much to talk about there. So, uh, so in addition to the to our kind of like main product, which is uh, which is a report on a used uh, EV for sale that like it shows up at a dealer a lot. Um, you know what you're talking about, Steve is is our uh, uh, basically product for owners uh, for EV owners, and um, it's a free you know uh, resource. It's it's a you sign up you get a monthly battery report that has more uh, deeper data analytics than what we can do on any just random EV that we see for sale. Um, but it's based on um, based on a, a, essentially a, a telematics, vehicle telematics that are coming from your car itself. So people can see what we're talking about here. Yeah. So it begins with uh, my range insights. So that's showing me uh, 254 miles, which is right in the, the EPA kind of uh, target, a little bit below, but, you know, bang on really considering we've just been through winter. And it's giving me a breakdown of um, different temperatures, which is pretty accurate. The the worst we see in Massachusetts is maybe single digits degrees Fahrenheit. And you're, you're taking a point of 15 degrees Fahrenheit with around 185 miles, which is bang on uh, from what we just went through in winter. Hmm. Um, and, and I will say just to interject, like that we're one of the changes that changes that we made recently under the hood on the as we've gotten more data and as our uh, predictive algorithms have gotten more sophisticated is that now uh, no matter where you are in the country we're doing we're using this sort of local they're not it's not exactly the extreme temperatures the very coldest that it gets in 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 Massachusetts for instance but, uh, but we're using basically the annual sort of like high and low temperatures for your area and then we're setting that middle uh, the middle number to um the kind of the ideal temperature sort of like mm -hmm. if you were to drive as far in your area what's realistic so there's some places where you don't quite get to the ideal temperature ever you know for yeah. your for where what, what you would get the most range with but this is all local weather conditions for mm -hmm. anybody getting this report so actually interestingly if you were to move to houston or whatever you know you would update your zip code and then and then your report would change uh because right. we're using different weather data for it so it's that not a, nice yeah. Um, Moving forward, where we're going with this report is to start to tease out, you know, what part of your vehicle's current range is like a sort of temporary seasonal and what part is long term sort of natural battery degradation. So and and how can we pull that apart so that people can under better understand what's going on, like what sticks around and what doesn't. There is some long term battery degradation as a result of as a result of extreme sort of exposure to heat. Now, there's ways of mitigating that as you know, we can get into and that's what we try and do in this report. Um, but on the flip side, people in very cold places, um, while you have temporary range loss because of um, because of like you're using the heat, you know, and like it's, batteries are not working as efficiently in that in those conditions, um, you know, you're not getting as much long term battery degradation in those colder environments. Um, the, it's not as harmful. Um, so I've got charging insights online, 33% uh, yeah. average charge, which seems to indicate I was leaving it pretty low. Um, I definitely did some charge session videos last month. So that's hopefully what that is. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some, uh... And this is I mean, I think this is this is obviously, um, you know, I think part of what we're seeing with some of the with some owners is they are, um, you know, I, I'd say like you were doing maybe some weird things where you're running it really low on, on purpose yeah. last month. Um, uh, but we definitely see some some owners who just have their target charge level set to you know, 90, 100% in some cases, not bolts, obviously, but, um, and, uh, and they're not driving much. And so, you know, what we're trying to do here, and that's pretty harmful to leave your vehicle just at high states of charge plugged in for a long period of time. Uh, we believe that like the odometer isn't going to matter as much as the health of the battery for the resale value of these cars. And so you do want to like take some basic steps that fit with your lifestyle to keep the vehicle, to keep the battery in good shape. And so this is like one of the visualizations. So that green gold, Goldilocks zone is where we want to, you know, is, is where you want to mostly be mm -hmm. um, for your, uh, for your, uh, your car over time. But, you know, um, Obviously, and we're going to get more sophisticated on this as well, where it's not just like, hey, we'll always recommend that you be in there no matter how you're using it. So I think that that's, that's part of where we'll go with this over time.
No, it makes sense. Although I am uh, the green, obviously, kind of attracts the eye, and I'm just squeezed into it, so I'm not as bad as everyone. You're not as bad. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right. okay. I, I get the sense I'm preaching to the choir. This poll, and I'm going to turn back. Yeah, now. yeah, yeah. Um, let's see what else. So I've got my manufacturer date, age of battery, my odometer, and warranty readings. Um, yeah, and then there's uh, actually this brings us on nicely uh, with yeah. the market insights um, section. So I've got uh, my bolt as appreciating a little bit, although it's obviously leased, so it makes not much difference to me. <laughs> the financial will be happy. Yeah, um, and I'm at uh, right, right around twenty-seven and a half thousand dollars for my estimated market value. So maybe you want to. Um, I know you just on the report released the uh, the used EV market report. So maybe you could take us into that and uh, yeah. kind of figure out uh, what my bolt's worth at the moment and how that was calculated. You know, this is this is something we just added uh, two months ago to the monthly reports because we just thought like there's a really thin market right now for. Um, used EVs. There's just not a lot, you know, going on. And f I, I just pulled the the latest data actually for, for bolts in, in the Northeast, just to look at like what's out there. Mm -hmm. And right now, like as we're talking, <laughs> there are uh, in the overall, you know, Northeast, Massachusetts, Connecticut, New York, New Jersey, there are 21 used bolts for sale entirely in those four states that's it right Sorry. that that's just a snapshot of the inventory right so like it's just like it's pr it's pretty unusual to you know there's not a lot of dealers that have a lot of them i'll put it that way mm -hmm. um and i think they, they turn pretty quickly right when they're in there uh, especially with like the recent um we haven't we're i think this is going to be uh, one of the stats we talk about in our june report that's coming out um in a couple of weeks but um you know that the the fuel shortage it was i think more in the in the southeast you know i i, I think we saw a spike in in ev sales and particularly used ev sales when everyone is like wait a minute you know what i you know what i'll never have to do if i have an ev is like go stand in line at a gas station and potentially have a run out of fuel you know to your point and what what it shows on your uh, report now right now this is um that's a national estimate um as opposed to a uh, to local um and that's you know but what we do talk about in our used market report um is we show like state by state differences of like where what the vehicle values are in um you know in different areas of the u.s and it actually varies quite a bit like something you know it can be like three to six thousand dollar price differences for the same vehicle across state lines mm -hmm. and i think that's driven by a couple of things uh one is the is um you know just like uh, small differences in supply and demand, you know, from state to state, you know, these vehicles can be transported all over the place. But, you know, I think that that uh, it, it's not like a perfect market in, in when you have so few vehicles for sale. Right. Um, and then the other thing that's going on there is state level incentives are, you know, are present and different. Like I live in Washington state where there's no sales tax on mm -hmm. uh, any EVs new or used up to $45,000 purchase price, you know, and we have a 10% sales tax. So like, that's a big incentive that's present at the state level here, but not across the border in Oregon. Right. Um, so those kinds of incentives at the state level are tacked on top of whatever was going on at the federal level and are actually causing some price difference, some pretty substantial price differences. Mm -hmm. um, so I think uh, that's in the, the the market report that we publish each month, but we're going to eventually start to sort of like bring that into the individual, um, you know, your, your vehicle's estimate. And then along with other things about like, okay, your battery is like this compared to other people's. And so that's going to have some impact. Uh, we can't know everything here, but, you know, but this, the idea for this report is like when you're, you, you already said you lease this, but like, you know, maybe when you're kind of thinking about like, do I buy out the lease at the end of the lease term? What's it, what's it worth for me to pay, you know, mm -hmm. or for somebody who ha who owns their car, they're thinking about selling, like, when do I, like, should I sell now or should I wait, you know, um, you know, use EV prices or like not behaving the same way as as uh, combustion engine vehicle prices, and and I should say just like for for people that are just getting into and thinking about buying e a used EV, like generally speaking, the batteries are holding up great. Like they're holding up better than people's expectations and the perception of how how they'll hold up. Basically, the the monthly reports thing, which I'll make another plug for now, you know, is like that's a it's it's a free way to. Um, to muck around with that data in the service of getting 
all, you know, sort of opening up the market for everybody else. And so like, if you're one of those people that's driving around and you take your friend on a road trip or whatever, and you, you just can't shut up about, you know, your Tesla or, or your Volt or whatever, and you just want to talk about it with everybody, this is a way to actually like translate that enthusiasm into growing the market. You know, my plug that I want to put in here is like, we there are definitely um, makes and models that we really need more of. Um, and I know you're mostly oriented around bolts. I really, if, if any i3 drivers, any e-golf drivers, any Audi e-tron drivers um, are out there, like I really need some more of those right now to, to, because the more data we have, you know, we have a, we have a couple hundred of each of those, but like the more data we have, the, the tighter precision we can do on our, on our machine learning models. And so, um, so it's just sort of this collective, like we need to get to a critical mass and we're, we're almost there with those three in particular. 